Spoil alert, if you haven't seen the television show Breaking Bad and you do not want to have any of the television shows spoiled for you, now is your chance to run. But if you're wanting to see how you as a copywriter or a marketer could use some of the writing tactics used in one of the most groundbreaking writing centric shows ever made, then you need to stick around. Today we'll be talking about how the writers of Breaking Bad actually told stories backwards and how you can apply this technique to your own personal story within a video sales letter. I'm John Benson and this is Sales Copy Secrets. Welcome back and this is Reverse Storytelling, the copywriting secrets found within the television show Breaking Bad and my voice is definitely a little under par right now because I'm just recovering from a nice bout of bronchitis, but hey, I'm almost back to normal, back to normal enough to do these videos, so stay with this. I think you'll learn a lot out of this, especially if you are a copywriter or if you are a marketer or if you're looking for copywriting tips, tactics, and techniques, this is for you. So let's dive right into the training right now. And my voice just went up an octave. Ah, there's no control over it. But okay, so check this out. Before we dive into this, I need to set the story here, or set the scene a little bit here, because I was never a Breaking Bad fan. I never watched the show at all until I got sick. And I was stuck in bed for like 10 days and thought, okay, I'm going to binge watch something because I can't do anything. And I found Breaking Bad and fell in love with it, binge watched the whole five season in 10 days. So it was kind of a lot until I heard that David Blaine, the magician, did it all in a weekend. I don't know how he did that. But check this out. In case you don't know, Breaking Bad is the story of a guy named Walter White, who is a high school chemistry teacher and has a diagnosis of terminal cancer. Gets this diagnosis on top of a whole bunch of horrible life events that happened to him. Basically, he's he's humiliated in his career. He's humiliated in many ways in his personal life, even though he's got a, a really stable, a loving family. But all of this starts to add up and he decides to break bad, as the title suggests. And he breaks bad for a good reason, if you think about it. He wants to take care of his family because he's going to be dead within a year or so, or so he believes. And so he decides he's going to use his chemistry knowledge to cook and sell crystal meth, like you do. So throughout the entire series, you get this great interaction between his evil self and his good self. He actually names his evil self Heisenberg. And is he Heisenberg? Has he always been Heisenberg? Has he not been? Has he transformed? Is he literally changing from a good man to a very evil man? What is going on here? Well, the acting performances of Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul, who plays Jesse Pinkman, his, his kind of conscious alter ego, if you will, in the story, are so brilliant. And the writing is so well done with all of the cast members. You find yourself rooting for a drug dealer. You find yourself rooting at least to a point, and everybody has a different breaking point in Breaking Bad, of rooting for this guy who is doing these really terrible things. But this is a great example of how writing can be done to influence and in this way entertain. But they do it, they have a technique inside of Breaking Bad that was really pioneered by Vince Gilligan, the creator of the show, where he starts telling stories completely backwards. So he starts at the end and works his way to the beginning. And they do this throughout the whole uh, series in little ways, but they do it in an entire season in a massive way. That's what I'm going to cover today and tell you how you can do it inside of your own video sales letter story to make it even more compelling. So it's not just, by the way, the script writing that's breathtaking. It's the storytelling. It's the way that they tell stories. And you can absolutely apply this to your marketing. And as we'll see in the next week's video, you can apply it to how you write it or how you write every kind of story you do. I think you'll find a lot of really cool stuff in this video. So if you think about it, one of the things a television show has to do, especially a serialized television show like Breaking Bad, is they have to sell the user, if you will, the reader, if you will, the viewer, every single week. Every week you need to be resold to watch the next week's episode. Now this is true of virtually all of television. However, episodic television has it a little bit easier because there's a new story every week. Well, Breaking Bad is a continual story. So it's a serialized story. Has to be even stronger writing. And this is exactly the same thing that is true inside of a video sales letter. To get somebody to watch your video sales letter, to, to listen to your story, to see your story on screen, you need to have a lot of the elements that you will find in great screenwriting. Doesn't that just make sense? Because it is a video sales letter after all. It should have components of video, i.e. script writing. 
And today I'm going to be covering reverse storytelling. Like I said, well, let's define the term reverse storytelling. Reverse storytelling is similar to the technique of middle arch storytelling, which I've covered in a previous video, or that of beginning a story in the middle of the action. However, with reverse storytelling, you begin the story at or near the end of the story, leaving the audience with a pattern interrupt that's undeniable and, if done correctly, with an insatiable desire to see how the pieces fit together. Now, reverse storytelling isn't like giving away the entire plot. For example, oh, the, it was the butler that did it. Oh, now let's find out how he did it because that would remove all tension. It has to be a lot more clever than that. And believe you me, the Breaking Bad writers have this down to a science and you can definitely adapt this for your own storytelling needs. Today, we'll look at how Breaking Bad season two specifically not only revealed the gut-wrenching plot of the entire season in four different episode intros sparse throughout the year, they actually told you what you were watching if you paid attention to the titles of these four episodes. I mean, that's carrying it to an extreme. The way this was done was so brilliant that it left most of the audience believing that at least two people would be killed that season, probably primary characters because it was happening at the home of the primary character, Walter White, as the previews involved body bags in Walter's driveway, a team of agents around his backyard, and all this dark, macabre stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recap some of the season four or four intros that we're talking about here. And we're going to parallel that to how you could do this inside of a video sales letter. And before I do that, let me just ask you a question. Have you learned something already? A little bit of stuff? Have I got your curiosity peaked? If so, do me a favor and pulverize that like button, smash that bell for notifications when my new videos drop, leave me a comment below because it really helps the channel grow and subscribe if you haven't already. And let's get on with it. So the first episode of season two starts off with this bizarre, dark, scary feeling, black and white montage of seemingly discombobulated scenes. It starts off looking at a swimming pool and there's a stuffed animal in the swimming pool. And you can tell the stuffed animal rolls over. It has one eye. Okay. And you're like, what on earth? Now, you know that Walt has a, uh, has a swimming pool in his backyard, so you suspect that it's his backyard. And there's all these other flashback images and really sharp, like, contrasting images going on. And you just don't know what's going on. So the title of this first episode is called 737. And all you know at first is there is something tragic that's going to happen. You probably think it's going to happen within the first episode because, after all, this is an intro to the first episode. However, your pattern has been so interrupted by all of this because none of it makes any sense. It's like, what on earth is going on? So much so that a lot of people watched the entire season just to see what the hell this was about. That's a serious pattern interrupt. Obviously, you want to use that in a video sales letter as well. So right off the bat, we're learning something. Now, the title, like I said, is 737. And as in all Breaking Bad episodes, they mention the title in the script of the episode some way or somehow. In this particular case, 737 is resolved because it is the amount of money that Walter needs in order to set his family up for life. He figures it all out down to $737,000. That's what he needs to do. He needs to sell that much meth and then he can stop and get out of the business and he's got his family set up for basically the rest of their life. Now, we don't think anything about this 737 after the very first episode and that is the nature or the reason for the title or so we're led to believe. All we know is that we've got one episode and we've seen a glimpse of either how the season will unfold or something because it doesn't unfold in that episode. And we're like, okay, well, it's got to be something toward the end of the season. Maybe it's how it's going to end. And that's when this reverse storytelling really kicks in. Oh, they're showing us the end of the season in the very first episode, but it makes no sense whatsoever. It takes episode four in season two before you see the next montage, and it's a very much like the first one. It's a even darker. It shows even more dark stuff, and the name of that episode is Down. And the reason it's called Down has to do with the fact that that episode deals with heavily in depression. One of the main characters is going through depression, and you just figure, okay, well, Down, you're, it's, you know, there's the, the business is going down, and there's dep depressive characters, and you don't think anything about it. You still know, have no idea. Okay, you're four seasons, four episodes in, and you have no idea where they're going with this weird montage. Episode 10 begins again at the end of the story, and this time we see body bags in the driveway. We see men in hazmat suits, and we still have no idea what any of these end of the story images even mean. We just know something very bad is going to happen. Now, bear in mind, this is well into the season, episode 10, and no one I know caught what was going on. I certainly didn't. The title of the episode is called Over. 
And it's given that it deals with Walter's alter ego, Heisenberg, rearing up for the first time against his brother-in-law, who happens to be a DEA agent. And to this point, who is utterly clueless as to Walt's true nature. So the title could have been seen as Walt's life after Walter White was over. In other words, his his previous life is, is gone now. He's basically just become this dark character. But the writers were sending us a message in the titles the entire time. And no one that I knew was aware of it. Then finally, we have episode 13. So 13 episodes into the season, and this is called ABQ, and that's short for Albuquerque because the show takes place in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and those images return. Only this time, the montage ends, revealing Walt's house with black plumes of smoke coming up from behind it, and an entire team of cops and professionals surrounding the house. At this point, you know that he or someone in his family is going down. There's something absolutely show changing is going to happen and you still have no idea what it is. You've just been told the story from the end. That is unless you were savvy enough to put the titles of the episodes together. And if you did that, you would get 737 down over Albuquerque. That's exactly what happened. And how the season ends is Walter looking up and seeing two planes crashing into each other and debris falling everywhere. Debris falling into his pool, bodies falling. It's just a horrific kind of scene. And he knows that he is directly responsible for those two airplanes colliding together. So they told the aftermath of the story throughout the entire intros of the first few episodes of the season, and even in, all the way up to you know episode 13, and you still didn't know what was going on. All you knew was, was something tragic was happening. It was led you to believe that someone in his family was going to hire him. No one in his family died. What happened was his actions through all of those episodes added up and culminated in the deaths of hundreds of innocent people. Now, this is dark. Granted, this is very dark, but it's brilliant storytelling. We're hooked and we're even confused from the very beginning all the way near to the very end of the season. And they teased the end of the season, not with the hook of the end of the season, which is the two planes colliding into each other, but with the aftermath. So they even went to beyond that part of the story. They went to the very, very end of the story showing just the aftermath. So the question becomes, other than maybe intri intriguing you to rewatch that season of Breaking Bad, what does this do for your copywriting? How can you use this in copywriting? How can you use this in your own storytelling? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my own story rewritten in this style, and I'm going to make it very short. It's my weight loss story. I'll, I'll recap it for you really quickly, and then I'll, I'll do it in this style. And in case you don't know, uh, I was an athlete in college and got out of college and started my own company. And I started working myself into the ground, started eating tons of fast food, went through depression, ended up obese and very, very ill. In my, I, was, I was about 32 years old and I was obese and very uh, out of it. I was like completely depressed and, you know, was eating myself into an early grave. And I had a massive heart attack at 38 and almost died. So I reversed my whole life after that point and became rededicated to my athletic stuff and to nutrition and to bodybuilding and fitness and ended up writing two best-selling books. And that's how you're talking to me today is because of, of all of that past. And when I usually tell that story, I tell the story using the middle arc technique. In other words, I, t I go into the middle of the story. I'll tell the story from what it felt like to be inside of a care flight helicopter with my nose pressed up against cold metal steel and stuff like that. But I'm not going to do this here because I'm trying to do this new technique for you. So I'm going to show you how I would do that using the reverse storytelling technique. So keeping true to our Breaking Bad example, here's how that story may go. I fought for every breath. It was as if I was running a marathon with a backpack full of bricks. Every muscle hurt. Every second I grew closer to passing out from dehydration. Okay, so I'm painting my end of story picture and it sounds like something tragic is going on, right? I'm doing this because I'm taking inspiration from the Breaking Bad stuff. And I probably have your attention now. I've probably scratched enough of that pattern to interrupt to make it in your brain go, okay, what is going on here? What, what, is he going through a heart attack? What's, what is going on? But watch as I continue and you'll see how this unfolds. Great shot, John. We're almost done. The most famous physique photographer on earth was shouting commands at me. He knew this was my first time. He also knew how demanding six straight hours of muscle flexing and tensing can be. I had no idea. I just knew that for the first time in my life, I could clearly see every muscle in my body. But I didn't set out to become a walking anatomy chart. Hell, I almost didn't set out at all in the world of fitness. You see, it was only a few years prior when I became a heart cripple, an obese, hopelessly ill, middle-aged man destined to be yet another grim statistic. And if it wasn't for what I'm about to share with you, that's how I would have died. 
Then I would go on to still tell my story from the very beginning, okay? How I got into working too much and became obese and et cetera, et cetera. But I started from the end and I did it in a way that made you believe that it was something really dire that was going on. I'd create a little bit of tension with that whole burning and feeling like the muscles were on fire and dehydrated. That's all true. That was all how I felt during a photo shoot. But in reality, I back off and you see, oh wow, that's a really good thing. I'm actually being shot for a national magazine cover and the first time in my life. And and so I start with this really great thing. But if I just started off with that, it would be it wouldn't be good storytelling. So you want to ratchet that up a little bit. Find those unique things in it that can make make uh, that intro to the story feel like a pattern or very much like the four episodes of Breaking Bad did so brilliantly well. And that's what storytelling really comes down to is the ability to impart to your user, impart to your viewer, a, a kind of a way for them to see their own story unfolding the similar to the way that yours unfolded. If you can help someone do that, you've really breached, breached a gap and you can really reach out and grab somebody where it counts, how it counts in the moment that it counts, which is right now. That's the only moment you have with somebody when they're watching a video sales center. If you can capture their attention like that, put them in that position and put them in a position where they can see the consequences of their actions, especially, which we're going to talk about in the next video. So if you like this video, you got to stick around for the next video because I'm going to go into a yet another Breaking Bad copywriting lesson where we're looking at what I call the drama loop and how to create a drama loop inside your story to where your user is very well aware of the not only the stakes that are at, or the, what's at stake, but the consequences of their actions. Super important storytelling stuff. That's coming up in the next video. So do me a favor. If you like this video, thumb it up below and stick around for the next video. And until next time, I'm John Benson. I'm here to help make you unignormal.